By my calculations, there have only been about a dozen players from this area who've been first round NFL draft picks. The pride of Southwest High School and Mizzou, Howard Richards is one of them. And the Mizzou analyst is tonight's Cardinal Buick Sunday Conversation. All right, Howard, let me take you back to 1981, your draft day. I imagine it was just like this year, national television, you're surrounded by millionaire agents, you have a $5,000 Brioni suit on, you're being interviewed by everybody, right? If you go back and look at the picture of my draft day, you'll see I'm wearing a Riddell t-shirt, uh, which I've not received one check from Riddell yet. Uh, anyway, I was in my apartment with our uh, equipment manager, a few friends of mine, and got the call about 12.20 p.m. Uh, from Gil Brandt after my name was announced on ESPN by then Commissioner Pete Rosette. Mizzou has their biggest draft class in six years, five players selected. Let's break down two of them. First, Nick Bolton. What does he look like at the next level with the Chiefs? Nick's an intense player, uh, very intelligent, you know, great football IQ. Uh, he's a hustler. He's a grinder. He's going to try to make every play on defense uh, if you allow him to. Larry Roundtree was the last Mizzou player, sixth round of the Chargers. What about Larry at the next level? I think if he gets a fair shot, he can easily make the team. He's a guy that will contribute in a number of ways, whether it's on special teams, uh, whether running the ball, he can get tough yards. Um, you know, he can catch the football out of the backfield, but every running back, you know, needs to, I think, uh, become a better receiver uh, with the way teams throw the ball these days. Lifeblood of every college football program, of course, is recruiting. Coach Drink had the 28th best class in the country. He's bringing in talented wide receivers. How's he doing it? I think with sincerity. Um, you, he, he, I think in the first year, he saw the guys that were ready to play, whether they were initially starters or not got a chance to play because of their effort. And, you know, just because you started last week uh, in this drink offense doesn't mean you're going to start uh, the following week. So you prove yourself week in and week out. You prove yourself in practice. And I think that's what it's going to take. How about the diversity of his coaching staff? Eight African-Americans now on staff. What do you think about this move? And he goes out of his way to say, hey, look, we're not just hiring these coaches because they're African-American. It's because they're great coaches, too. Well, I think that's a fair statement. I think it's a true statement. Um, if you just look at the backgrounds of the guys that he has on his coaching staff, uh, I, I think it speaks for itself. You know, these guys are very talented. It, just look at the players that they've coached up and down, uh, you know, wh whether it's in college or whether at the NFL level. A little bit about your life. After football, 13 years with the CIA, you served under four different CIA directors. You were on some dangerous missions. What was more scary to you, blocking Lawrence Taylor or being on some of these missions? <laughs> you know, actually, there are times uh, that, that blocking LT and the likes of uh, the other guys in, in the division that we played in the NFC East, uh, Dexter Manley comes to mind. He's a guy that I played against uh, also in college. Uh, it was a little more difficult. Not to say that uh, what I did with CIA was easy because it wasn't. Uh, but, but, you know, playing in the NFL is, um, you know, it, it is a tough, tough road uh, and it takes dedication and hard work. And you've got to challenge yourself year in and year out. In your prime, you were 6'6", 265. Describe the scene when a young man would come to your house to pick up your daughter for a date. <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, he better not have sagging pants and he better not have on a cap. He better ring the doorbell and he better say, Mr. Richards, I'm here to pick up your daughter. That's what better happen first. But he, he's got to be, you know, articulate. He's got to be intelligent. Uh, and he's he better know that uh, when my daughter has to be home, she better be home at the time that uh, she was instructed to be there. 